Okay, so with the success of getting all this in, painted and pretty, we're now going to focus a little bit on drive lines. So we've got a small case diff, going to change the bushes, going to paint some stuff, and we're going to get it driving again. So uh, yeah, let's just crack on really. Okay, so with E36 diffs, uh, the two most common are going to be small and medium case. Uh, this is a small case because we basically have one bolt and one bolt. A medium will have two and two. Uh, so it'll actually be an eight, eight bolt rear end on a medium case, but small should be alright for what we're going to do. Um, obviously going to weld it, so we're going to whip all them bolts off, split this off. I'm going to press these out, I'm going to put the Duraflex bushes in. Uh, and then once it's all welded and back together we're going to put it in the car um, I might leave one shaft unbolted for a minute because I'm still pushing it around so obviously when it's welded this won't spin freely to that one, they'll spin together so pushing them is an absolute nightmare ok so whip the six bolts out I've already split this case off so I can do it with one hand but that's what you're going to be greeted with I have to get all that oil out a lot of brake cleaner, make sure there's absolutely nothing left in there and then uh, we'll get through what needs welding and where and why and all that sort of stuff so I'll clean it out and I'll be back Right, so covered this in brake cleaner. That's a really, really rough way to make sure all the brake cleaner is out. Because if you haven't got it out and you pull the trigger for the welder, it'll uh, it'll blow your face off. So we're going to pre-blow our face off with one of these and a bit of squirt. I think this is flammable. Flammable. That would basically burn all the brake cleaner off. Um, wouldn't really recommend doing that if you're not comfortable, but oh well. Okay, so the fire's burnt away. Now you should be able to see that basically everything we want to weld is matte in colour, not shiny. Uh, that basically means it's clean. Um, so what we're going to do, got some light. So what we're going to do is weld that gear to that gear. Those two just here. I'm going to weld them two there. It's a bit tight, but underneath here is the same again. So we're going to do that corner, that corner, and I'm going to weld this to this case, this to this case, that to that case, um, and then just absolutely do these corners because I can't get in there to do the case on that one. Same on that side, same on the other side. Never have one break. Um, so I'll set the camera up if I can, weld it, and then we'll get back to you. So I've just welded the four corners, uh, you can see nice welds, uh, good enough for me. Make sure obviously you need to rotate the diff so we need to do the other side of exactly what we've just welded. Uh, I'm just going to weld the casings now and then we'll spin it round. So that's it, we've spun it round, we've done both sides. Um, if you weld the four planet gears together first, then do the casing, that takes care of any preheat cast issues that people seem to mention on the internet. I've never had an issue before, but I've always done the castings last, so maybe that's why. Um, now the next thing to do is give it a good clean out, wait till it's cooled down. Uh, make sure you get all the slag out the bottom of the diff, otherwise you'll chew everything up and fuck everything. So we'll uh, we'll do the back plate now. Then that'll be cold enough, so we can get the brake cleaner in. Again, clean that out, reseal it, put some oil in it, put it back in there. I was going to paint it. I'm running out of time at the minute, so. 
we're going to be cruddy. We're going to put all the cruddy stuff back on. Um, so we've got to get onto brakes and things. So the videos are going to be a bit mismatched at the minute, but edited, they'll all be all right. So whenever you watch the video, it'll be in the right order. It's just my life that's a mess. So let's do the back plate. All right, so we've pressed the old ones out, pressed the new ones in. Um, you've seen me use a press before, so I don't need to show you this. While the diff was out, I thought I'd show you how to work out what ratio you've got if you don't already know. So put a mark on the input flange and the casing just so they're in line. And then put a mark on the output flange to the casing. And then you want to count how many different in turns each, each flange has. So basically what we'll do is we'll turn this. And you can see there, that's one full turn on the input. We're not back round yet, so I'm going to do another turn. We're still not back round yet. And we're going to do another turn. So we've done three turns on the input. You can see we're quite close to getting the output to line up again. So what I'm going to do is turn the input until the output lines up. You can't really see this, but it's basically a, about a third, just past a third of the way round. Now we know that this is a 3.38, so this is going to turn 3.38 times for each one time this turns. And then you've got 293s, 315s, 345s, etc. So what we have to do turn this, count how many turns that is for each one of those, and then you'll get a diff ratio. So your faces are clean, and you're ready to bolt them back together. How much oil do you put in? A small case takes 0.9 litres and a medium case takes 1.1 litres. I put 75W90 in, it's a nice thick gear oil. You don't need to go as thick as LSD oil for something like this. Um, but just make sure you put a good amount of oil in there. It stops them absolutely disintegrating. So I'm going to put some oil in, I'm going to put some sealer on that flange, I'm going to bolt that back to that. And then we're going to stick it in there. So I'll do all that and then we'll be back. Okay, so I put all the diff back in the car. Um, already taken all the gearbox and everything out. I didn't really feel comfortable talking on video while there's people still at work. So I've decided to film everything and then voice over everything. So it's going to be a bit weird for you, but whatever. Um, when you're taking the gearbox out, there's this little bolt in this plate. And it's an absolute nightmare if you don't know it's there. So make sure you take that out. The box won't come out. 215 mil dual mass flywheel dead small not going to hold the power so I'm going to take all this out um, and then we're going to fit this M3 paddle clutch so I'm going to go through all that with you obviously when fitting the new flywheel there's this little dowel that the flywheel has to sit in I'll show you on the back of the flywheel what the hole looks like but it's literally exactly what you think it's just a bigger a bigger hole that accepts this so make sure you get that lined up and don't crush it otherwise the flywheel won't sit properly and then it'll vibrate So this is the new clutch, um, as you can see it's single mass flywheel, 240mm, meant to go on a 3 litre M3 but we're going to run it in a 318, uh, hopefully it will hold the power of the turbo. It was cheap, it was only 250 quid delivered for everything that you see, um, so I'm not expecting too much from it but it's worth a shot for that kind of money. Um, but yeah, just unsprung, really aggressive, probably going to blow some gearboxes and diffs up but we'll see that when we get there. So this is the bigger hole on the back of the flywheel, so like I say it's really obvious, just make sure it's all lined up. So as expected when tightening your flywheel bolts, obviously do a cross pattern. Um, as you can see these ones have already got Loctite on them, it's super important to put Loctite on flywheel bolts, it's not worth the risk. Be able to bolt this up, we'll get all the clutching and everything, and then we'll see where we're at. Putting a clutch in, you don't actually need an alignment tool, just make sure you take care and a bit of time to make sure that, that the um, friction plate is super centred. Use the spigot bearing as a guide and then obviously put the splines of the friction plate completely in the centre and then just tighten the bolts up on the pressure plate evenly and going obviously opposite to opposite and then it will pull down square. It's also worth spending a bit of time to clean up the input shaft of the gearbox. 
this one would have been sat a while so the release bearing wouldn't actually move freely up and down so I've sanded it all down uh, put a light amount of grease on the inner of the release bearing and then just made sure it does actually move freely up and down up and down that shaft because if it doesn't your clutch pedal is not going to work properly and then your clutch ain't going to work properly so when putting the two top gearbox bolts in come from the driver's side of the shifter and the prop and the gearbox and everything and then go in with two really long extensions it is easier from this side obviously because the engine's tilted um, just makes it a lot less hassle trying to get your hand over the top of the box just put your bolt in your in your socket in your extension and feed it over the top and then just tighten up as normal there's no excuses not to put these bolts in they're really not that hard to get in while we're here it'd be silly not to fit the Duraflex gearbox mounts so uh, got the old ones off as you can see here's the new ones uh, they've got obviously locator pins in them the locator goes to the top and there's two little cutouts that actually sit in the gearbox cross member so we're going to swap everything over and get everything bolted back up this is the upper shifter linkage pin it pushes in from the passenger side and then obviously lops over uh, to get them off i use a stubby flathead screwdriver and basically put it underneath and then actually twist the screwdriver sideways because you need to release this little tab otherwise they can fight with them re really badly and it's really annoying especially on your back so flat screwdriver in twist and it'll pop straight up no problem okay so i've got all the gearbox and everything back in i've actually managed to split the coolant flange on the back of the head so i'm gonna have to get one of those it's currently dripping all over me um need to get some clutch hydraulics so a trip to Mid midland bmw spares is definitely on the cards but props in you can see all the diffs in all that's in we'll get the hydraulics sorted and then we actually have a hopefully have a clutch i'm um, going to do all the brake lines next so you'll see this hopefully now driving in the next video but we'll see how we go i'm going to end this one here and i'll see you all later